Hello everyone, Shiki here again. This is part two of our anime discussion stuff. And uh, yeah, so welcome, welcome, welcome. But before we uh, get into the, the main, talking about the shows that I'm gonna watch and enjoy uh, kind of thing, let me uh, talk about the season twos that I'll be watching, that I'll be enjoying, and uh, all that good stuff. So, first of all, there's obviously the Rising of Shield Hero season two. That one is going to be fun. Yes, indeed. I think it's going to be quite great. Uh, I like the first Shield Hero, so with being a second Shield Hero, it's going to be really nice. Oh, yeah. There's also a number of other, like, second seasons for anime that I've not necessarily watched. Um, such as, like, the, uh, like, fourth season of this one, uh, show, and the fourth season of this, like, Kingdom show. Which, honestly, the Kingdom makes me actually kind of want to, like, look into it, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. But there's also Komi-san Can't Communicate's second season, which is coming out, which... It, it's more the same, although it really seems like the, the romance part of it is like shining through, whereas previously it was like they were all friends and stuff, you know. But this one, it seems definitely like it might be a little bit more romance stuff going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's, a, like I said, that fourth season of this show called Yata Game-chan Kan. Matsuniki? I'm not sure what the hell this actually means. What is, what is the English translation of that? But anyway, there's uh, the fourth season of that, which I have to watch all the seasons in order to catch up on, which is uh, not gonna happen anytime soon. I'll tell you that right now. Right now. Ah, <clears throat> but anyway, there's also the... Uh, Final season of the Madoka Record, uh, Magic Magica Record, Mahoshojo, the Madoka Magica uh, spinoff series. It's having its final season, which is neat. Um, that's pretty much all the second seasons that are coming out uh, and whatnot. So before we jump in again, in the previous video, I'd said that one of the anime I was going to watch was in the heart of Konichi, Konoichi, sorry. Tsubaki, and I just watched it today, and it would have been one that I was going to be like, yeah, I'm going to talk about this, but while I was watching it, I ended up like being like, I don't want to watch this part, skip ahead. I don't want to watch this part, skip ahead. I kept doing that, and uh, I don't know. It was a weird show, not really something that I uh, thought I'd be into. Yeah, definitely, definitely would not be into. Um, Basically, it starts out with uh, a group of girls, or female ninja, Koinichis, saying that like men are filthy and gross and scary and basically just like, men suck and all that kind of stuff, right? And uh, it's because they are lived like separately from men in like ninja villages and there's like a male ninja village and a female ninja village and whatnot. But like, it's like constantly they're talking about men all the time. And the main character, like, she wants to see men uh, because she's, like, I don't know, a teenage girl or something. It's, it's whatever. So she, like, wants to meet more of them. Has, like, this weird feeling. But, yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of, like, going back to, like, men are filthy and they're smelly because they never bathe. It's literally, like, so much that they talk about in these series or in the first episode throughout it that it was just, like, Oh my god, okay, we get it. Like they really had to drive that point home, I felt. It was like so overdone. Like it would have been just like once or twice, or like a couple of times here. But like they kept going with it, and it wasn't just like a comment here or there. It was like whenever they started discussing it, it was like for a couple of minutes they would discuss it, it felt like. And it was like, okay, seriously? And like, I don't mind. Like, people being like, men are stupid. But, like, goddamn. 
I want to watch this to be entertained. Boy. Boy, oh boy. Also, the uh, amount of young girls in the show really made the audio quite loud. <laughs> that was not... My, my ears were not agreeing with that. So I uh, decided I will not watch that show this season. <clears throat> anyway, moving on to our first actual show of this video. We have Shiki Mori's Not Just a Cutie. Now, I actually started reading the manga for this one a while ago. And actually, I think either I caught up to the manga or I stopped reading it for some reason. But I know I've read it because I remember the opening scenes. Uh, and actually, I only remember the opening scene of it. I don't remember the stuff that happened afterwards in the first episode, such as them going bowling. So I'm pretty sure I might have dropped the manga. But uh, yeah. Anyway, it's about uh, this guy that you can see here and his cute girlfriend, Shiki Mori, who you can see there, over there. And uh, Shiki Mori seems like the perfect girlfriend. She's all cute and fun to be around, but, but she has this like really dark, cool side that comes out under right circumstances. Like, the circumstance is being protective of her boyfriend, Izumi. And uh, yeah, it's great. So Izumi has this thing where he uh, is unlucky, I guess you would say. And when I say unlucky, I'm not just meaning like, oh, he you know, lost a lottery or he uh, trips and falls. He, uh, in, in the first episode, he tripped on a rock. He almost got pooped on by a bird, which caused him to stumble backwards and trip over a rope. He then almost got hit by a car, and his girlfriend saved him. He then uh, fell a couple of times, I think. And then he went bowling, and the first ball was straight, and then veered off and just hit one pin on the far left. He sent another ball down the lane. It did the same exact thing, except hit the ball on, or the pin on the right. So he knocked down two pins with one balls uh honestly if he was trying to uh take down pins for a 710 split that's what it's called right a 710 split i haven't been bowling forever mm. that's uh what he would have needed to do but sadly he needed to knock down all the pins and then randomly a perfectly fine looking sign decides to just fall off a building and almost kill him which his girlfriend amazingly like deflects it like, oh my god, this girl's amazing. So, uh, yeah. Very cool. So let's just say he's a klutz, right? Um, needless to say. But yeah, so it's kind of like a little romance, slice of life comedy about a klutzy boy who uh, nearly gets destroyed and injured by all his bad luck. And a cute girl who is also really cool under certain circumstances. Also, I really like the design of the character's eyes. It's like got this nice like gradient like glow thing going on to it. And it's just really nice, like really, really nice. I absolutely love it. It's great. It is beautiful. But yeah, so it seems like it could be cool. Um, it is a little bit cringy at times, but I think it's bearable for now, but we'll see how the rest of the uh, series plays out. You know, never know how it's actually going to go. But moving on from there, we have our next show, which is uh, Spy X Family. And this one... Ooh! So... You know, last video when I said that that Skeleton Knight anime was probably going to be my favorite of the season? Well, I think maybe Spy X Family is going to be my favorite of the season. Um, so the, the show centers around an agent, a uh, spy basically, known as Twilight. He's a master of disguise. He does all this work to like 
keep the peace of the world and his country and all of that stuff. However, this next mission he has is a bit odd. In order to assassinate a uh, right-wing polit politician guy from uh, an enemy country, he has to infiltrate a school that the politician guy will go to what once in a blue moon because the politician's son attends there. And the only way to get into the school is by being a parent of a child there. And so Twilight, not having a kid, is like, well, I guess we'll go adopt one, whatnot. And uh, so he just like goes into his like shitty orphanage and is like, I don't really have a shit about any of these kids. I just need one who can read and write. And the operator of the uh, orphanage is like, a, he's drunk and he doesn't give a fuck. And he's like, you just, just take, take whatever kid you want. You don't have to even do paperwork. Just, just take a kid. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, just asking for kids to come in and get kidnapped, to be honest. But there we find Anya, the pink-haired little girl who is just so goddamn adorable, who also is telepathic. She's a telepath. Yes. So she can read all of his thoughts and... He is like, well, I need someone who's like six years old. So even though she was like three or four or something like that, um, according to the orphanage director who's plastered as fuck, she just was like, I'm six years old. And uh, orphanage director's like, oh, where are you? Oh, whatever. Okay, that sounds about right. And uh, so using her like telepathy, she uh, tries to get him on her good side so she can get adopted. And so he quickly adopts her because she's smart, knows how to read and write, uh, all that kind of stuff. Although whether she's smart or not, because she solves this uh, crossword puzzle, don't know if that's the case or just because she read the mind of uh, Twilight here and wrote down what he thought the words were, incidentally. But, be that as it may, they uh, go and start living together, and very quickly she gets kidnapped <laughs> by some foreign agents. And so he, of course, goes and rescues her, takes out a bunch of the agents, and then uh, he's about to just say, you know, I'll just find another way to do this. I don't want to put children in danger, all that kind of stuff. And uh, she comes up to him and calls him Papa and hugs him, and he's like, well, I guess... This is my life now, essentially. And uh, it, it's just so adorable, like, him thinking all this spy stuff in his head while Anya can hear, or I guess, understands everything that he's thinking. And so she knows he's a spy and everything that he's doing. And uh, he, like, thinks stuff, like, I'm just going to send her back to the orphanage if this doesn't work out. And so she starts crying and, like, throwing a fit, and he doesn't know why and um, all that kind of stuff. And he can like hear, uh, she can hear like everything he's thinking, you know? So it, it leads to some real great stuff, just some real great stuff. And oh my God, I gotta say the best girl of the season has to be Anya, hands down. Like it's gotta be. Now the best waifu of the season I don't know. I've heard people really like the mom in this series, so it might be her. So this show might have best girl and best waifu. I don't know. Also, Twilight's not bad himself. Could be a good husbando. No. Not bad looking, and uh, he seems to actually care about the kids so far, so who knows? We'll see how this all goes. But my god! I was... Uh, I was expecting for this weird, like, little comedy thing of, like, haha, they're a spy while trying to have a family. And so, lol, hilarity is going to ensue. But in reality, there's, like, action in the comedy. And it's, like, a lot more serious than you think it's going to be. And it's, like, I'm in. I'm in. All I got to say. Also, uh, the second episode is titled Securing a Wife, which is just dandy. I just think that's hilarious. Because, uh, as you know, he's single and a bachelor. So he gets a kid, gets her enrolled in the academy, 
He passes the test and everything in the first episode. And then the next step to get into the academy is a meeting with the parents and the child with the school. And mother and father have to be there. So they need a mama. So I'm really curious how this is going to play out. Whether he's going to go around proposing to random women or how this other lady gets involved. Also, judging by just like promotional videos and like uh, imagery that I've seen, it seems like the wife that he's actually going to choose, this, this dark haired lady here in the, the thumbnail, uh, she's also a spy or, or something at least. And man, it's going to be crazy. Going to be crazy. I'm looking forward to it. Man, I wish I could binge watch it right now because it was so not only adorable because of Anya and everything, it was amazing because of the stuff Twilight was doing. Like going around doing spy stuff. Like, ah, oh, so good. Anyway, it's, uh, it's taken me 16 minutes I've seen to talk about two shows and some other stuff. So let's uh, continue on to the next one and uh, go from there, shall we? Our next anime is Don't Hurt Me, My Healer. And, well, we finally have one that aligns with my comedy, you know, my uh, things that I find funny, at least, you know. You know how sometimes I'm like, yeah, so this seems like it's an isekai comedy. And uh, the comedy, like, I, I, did, I wasn't into it. It was weird. It was dumb. This, I, I'm into this comedy in this show. It is. It is great. Because it's like a dumb kind of slapstick stuff that occurs. Like, uh, all of a sudden, a bear can talk. And it's like, what? And they're just, like, kind of ignoring that fact while one person does and one person doesn't. And it's like, okay, it, it's hilarious. I like it. So anyway, it is about uh, a healer named Carla, which is this dark elf gal you see here, and a swordsman named Alvin, who you never see his face. Um, it's always like obscured by either his helmet or like his hands or someone else's hands or some part of the scenery, uh, stuff like that. Because it, it's a guy. No one cares about fucking guys. Come on. And anyway... It starts out with Alvin fighting a bear and pathetically losing to it. And uh, then Clara, uh, she comes along, sees this struggle, and is like, hey, do you want help? And he's like, of course I want help. And then she's like, okay, grovel, and I'll uh, consider giving you help. And so he like stops the fight with the bear by saying, okay, just a moment, and then starts yelling at her. And uh, long story short, essentially what happens is she accidentally, uh, maybe, curses him to where if he goes uh, further than 300 meters away from her, he will die instantly. Uh, and so they have to form a party, essentially, and that's what puts them together and has this comedy duo doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? And then they sleep over at the bear's house, so that's kind of cool. It's weird. It is, it is really weird. Uh, it might be like a, a fantasy, like action adventure show, but it seems like it's going to be, there's little elements of that. And then the rest of it's just comedy and then like doing back and forth stuff. Which I think is just, just good. It, it, I wasn't sure about it at first, but as the story went along in the first episode, it, it got me. I was like, I'll watch this. This seems pretty dang good. But uh, yeah, so more about the characters. Uh, Alvin seems to be like the, uh, the straight man somewhat and uh, is like, hey, what, what, what do you mean? And Clara is the uh, kind of odd one who the, the, the actual synopsis says like she insults him a lot, but it's not as insulting as I thought. See, when I read that, I thought it was going to be like, her saying, like, he's pathetic and stuff like that. But she just makes, like, snide, like, could potentially be insulting, could potentially not be insulting comments. Except that's not necessarily meant 
as an insult, but is can be received as one, you know, stuff like that. Um, like after she heals him the first time and sees his face and he wakes up, she's like, I'm sorry, I couldn't heal your face. And they're making a huge deal out of it. He's like, what the hell do I look like? So they give him a mirror and he's like, this is how I always look. And that just got me. It was, oh my God. I, 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 could, I could feel that punchline coming up, but I just had to hear it from his mouth because it was fucking great. Ah, honestly, this show, if you're looking for a decent comedy, uh, you know, check it out. Like, even if you don't necessarily like the fantasy genre, it still seems like it could be pretty hilarious, you know? Still, you know, good bust a gut kind of stuff here, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. So, um, I think I'll just wrap things up there. There's not much to say about a comedy. I mean, I could just go through all the jokes they read, but, uh, I, that seems kind of pointless because that's why you would watch it for the jokes you know what i mean but uh yeah so i'll end this video here everyone there are two more shows that i plan on watching and at least talking about um, and that is summertime rendering and a couple of cuckoos and i think summertime rendering starts on the 15th and it's 25 episodes long so it's gonna be a longer one I'm going to do an individual video for that one because uh, it is like a week away from right now. And then a couple of cuckoos comes out in like two weeks. So I'm also going to do a video on that one separately just because I don't want to wait to push this video out for like a week or two. Um, and yeah, so we'll be discussing those two here a little bit later. If you want to hear about them, stay tuned. And after that, we'll be just doing nothing until uh, the anime season wraps up and I can talk about which ones are my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, that's all for me, everyone. Thank you for listening. And you guys have a lovely rest of your day. Bye for now.